What's good what's good what's good everybody welcome to another exciting edition of the black and gold hour podcast a podcast that's new orleans saints themed where we talk football and nfl news and in today's episode i'm really excited because i have someone that plays the game that we love he was first team first led the team in all defense in 2017 led the team the team in all tackles 2018 and was second in tackles in 2019 and he has some challenges in 2020 but he's looking to be a 2022 nfl draft um prospect and linebacker out of sienna heights linebacker nick stalwart how you doing today man hey i'm doing great how you doing sir good good man i'm happy to have you on the show man and i see the grind man and and it was when you reached out and we we kind of connected yeah. it was like yeah yeah i definitely want to work with him and just figure out his journey yeah. And when I think about journeys, when I think about like a good movie or a, a good book, I always like to start from the beginning mm -hmm. and kind of figure out how that person developed over the course of their life. So right. in, for my first question, I want to ask you, you know, what's your upbringing? What led you to, to love the game of football that we all love? Yeah, so I was blessed to grow up with both parents in the household and I grew up in Pontiac, Michigan at the start of my life. But uh moved to Clarkston, Michigan, and actually reside there when I go back home now. So I kind of grew up in Clarkston as well. But like I said, I was blessed to have both parents in the household. My dad, he actually played college ball at the D2 level. And when I was a young kid, like I've always, I always had a football in my hand. Even when I look at baby pictures, like I was always some football related football thing. And I mean, growing up, I mean, having my dad as my coach up until a certain point, I mean, he was the primary one that had me fall in love with the game at a young age, teaching me the fundamentals, the basics, and it was just a blessing. Man, that's good to hear. That's good to hear, man. And and I like how you have that that father son dynamic. So you guys can share that dynamic. Um, did he play the same position as you? Uh, he played linebacker and tailback in high school, and then when he got to college, he played defensive back. And I also forgot to mention, uh, I have a younger brother too who plays ball as well. That keep me. He, he keep me on my toes most definitely so <laughs> yeah so y'all got y'all got a family going so you got that those people to hold you accountable you got that support system when it comes oh. to chasing your nfl dreams yes, so sir. as i watched your highlights and um for those who are watching you guys will see the highlights at the beginning of the video he's all over the field when you watch nick he's playing close to the line of scrimmage he's dropping back in coverage he's all over the field um, and I want to ask, as a linebacker, mm -hmm. what do you bring to the position? Like, if someone asks you, an NFL scout reached out to you, what mm -hmm. does Nick Stallworth bring to the linebacker position? So I feel like I bring versatility to the linebacking spot. I feel like I can play all three linebacker positions. I feel like I can play a box safety as well. And I feel like I can stand on nickel and dime packages, can cover people, manner zone, just as well as I can play the run. I feel like I'm that hybrid linebacker and can do anything that's asked of me. And I feel like a lot of guys, they can't say that. So I feel like I'm that guy who brings that versatility as well as my smarts. I feel like I'm a film junkie. And I feel like knowing your opponent is the most important part of the game. So I feel like knowing your opponent, having that one step ahead of them, I feel like that's what makes me play as fast as I do. So I feel like I bring versatility and I feel like I would compare my game to like, a Bobby Wagner or a Fred Warner in a Quan Alexander or an Eric Kendricks type body. 
Man, and, and, and as a Saints fan, man, we know about Quan Alexander, man. And when I watched your, your highlights, man, and, and I just, you know, checked out your game, man, what I was most impressed with was your ability to stay in coverage. Like a lot of linebackers can tackle and you definitely can do that. But you were in coverage, breaking up passes. You were all over the field, man. You you were all purpose linebacker. And that's, you know, your versatility will, mm -hmm. will you know, pay dividends in the NFL, man. So I'm... Keep it up, dog. Yeah, I appreciate it, sir. I appreciate it. No problem, man. And, and you know, 2020 was a crazy year for all of us, man. Oh. And, and due to the pandemic, you had some challenges in, in, in your 2020 season that had to be, you know, postponed due to the pandemic. Right. But I want to ask you, you know, you're going into your senior season mm -hmm. um, at Siena Heights. And that right. season will come to the end and you'll be on to a new journey. So I want to ask you. What is the most invaluable lesson? What will you remember most as at your as your time has been at Siena Heights? I feel like the thing I'll remember most is just the camaraderie that I have with the teammates, my teammates. And I feel like being a part of one of the top defenses consistently throughout the years in the nation, in the NAI, with playing with 10 guys along with myself, making 11, just flying around to the ball and just doing what we love and just consistently finishing in, in the top five defenses throughout the past few years. I mean, it's one of those things where, I mean, you work together with a group of guys as well as the offense too. I mean, you work against each other in practice, work with each other in practice. And I feel like just the camaraderie is the thing that I am going to miss the most. Man, that's really good, man. And I like how you talk about your family as well as your teammates and how, you know, we talk about how iron sharpens iron. And man, you just have that, those people pushing you to be better. You can't do it on your own, man. So that's what I really like hearing from you, man. And, and that's why I think you'll be a great addition at the next level because you're already thinking with a team aspect, man. I so No problem, man. So I wanted to ask you, you know, you've been three-time All-Conference in the MFSA Conference, man. I'm sure you've had accomplishments in high school as well um, as a talented player. So I want to ask you, what do you think your greatest accomplishment is, whether it be football or in life? What does Nick Stallworth value most? So I feel like the biggest accomplishment for me off the field is about to graduate here in a month with a biology degree. That's the that's the big thing for sure, because it's always books first. But on the field, I feel like the biggest thing that I've accomplished is just being a being an NFL prospect. I mean, especially like being considered like one of the top prospects as a small school product coming out in the 2022 draft. And I feel like that's my biggest accomplishment because it's one of those things where my whole life I've been underlooked and uh, underrated, overlooked, like. So it's one of those things where I'm just like so blessed to be in this position of being considered as an NFL prospect because my whole life I've been considered, oh, you're too short to play at this level. You're too a step too slow kind of deal. And I, like I said, I'm just blessed to even be considered an NFL prospect. So, Man, man, and, and I'm glad that you feel that way. And I'm glad that you also have your head in the books as well because getting a degree is no slouch either, man. And you're just right. doing it both ways on the field. Um, so I know you faced some challenges in 2020, but man, everything happens the way it's supposed to happen, man. And it's only making you better, not only as a football player, but also as a man. Mm -hmm. So I always, going back to my analogy about the stories and movies, man, yeah. I like to you know, start from the beginning and see the challenges that the main character is facing in a story. Mm -hmm. um, and for you, you faced your set of challenges as we all did in 2020. Um, it was a crazy year and a lot of us are still facing those challenges. So right. I want to ask, how do you find balance? Um, essentially, what's your motivation and what keeps you inspired to keep chasing your dreams? So being, like I said before, being underrated and under, uh, overlooked your whole life, I feel like that puts a certain certain chip or I like to say boulder on your shoulder and being like overlooked like all the time. And I feel like just just coming up and just just being able to do the things I've been doing, like with my teammates help, obviously. But it's just one of those things where like I am just so grateful and so blessed to be in this position. Because like I said, I've been over, overlooked my whole entire life. And I feel like I'm one of those players, like I'll never, 
be satisfied. Like, I feel like I'm a type of guy, like I'll, I want to make it to the NFL, but that's not my end goal. I feel like I'm one of those players that I want to have all pro season. I want to have pro bowl caliber type seasons. I feel like I want to make it to that second contract. Like I'm like, I want those things. And I feel like being overlooked my whole life is just one of those factors that's just keep kept me motivated throughout this whole entire thing. Man, and having that chip on your shoulder pays dividends, man, because it won't be just about getting to the NFL to be like you said, okay, becoming a Pro Bowl player. Okay, becoming a Super Bowl champion. Okay, becoming a Super Bowl MVP. Right. Okay, then as you get into the Hall of Fame and, and what's next for you. And so it's always that growth that you'll be having. Right. But let's 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 talk about uh, the New Orleans Saints, man. We're a New Orleans Saints themed podcast here, man. Uh, we love all NFL teams, but we're talking New Orleans Saints. And, yeah. and when you think about the New Orleans Saints, Saints, like, what do you think about when you think about them? And also, what would it be like playing in that Superdome on Sundays? So when I think of New Orleans, I think of that explosive offense. And I've always saw it led by nine, Drew Brees. I mean, now that he's gone, I mean, he had a heck of a career. But I always think of that explosive offense. And those teams that made a run, or that made a run in, the, in the playoffs, they've always had a sound defense. And just, like, to play with them on Sundays, that would be – that would be a dream. That would be a blessing because, I mean, you get to play next to Demario Davis. You get to play in front of Cam Jordan. And then you got Malcolm Jenkins behind you as well as Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. I mean, the, that would be a blessing. Like, that would be huge. And then to play with them and to learn from them and to see, like, all right, how do you study film? Like, what do you look for? Because I said, like I said earlier, I feel like I'm a film, I'm a film junkie. And I feel like just picking at their brands, I feel like it's more – that I can learn from them and just to play with them on Sundays, man, that would just be a dream come true, honestly. Yeah, man. And and when you begin to think about the New Orleans Saints as a fan, we think about all Drew Brees is done. Yeah. Um, but lately, over the last one or, one or two seasons, the defense has been the the, the strong suit of the team. Mm -hmm. um, Cam Jordan, Demario Davis, Marshawn Lattimore, uh, yep. Chauncey Gardner, Gardner Johnson, and, yep. and, and Marcus Williams at safety. They're doing their thing, man. And, and linebacker is a position outside of Demario Davis that we really need, man. So, man, if we could, you know, we get you on the squad in 2022, <laughs> man. That would be nice, man. And I like how you said you study film because it's important to be a student of the game um, and not just rely on talent and athleticism, but also putting in time to learn your craft. Because mm. one day, um, as you get into a veteran and, and a veteran in your career, that athleticism might not be where it was your rookie year, but right. having that brain and intellect on the field to go against these NFL quarterbacks, man, yeah. man, that'll, that'll extend the length of your career and make you a leader on the field and off. Yes, sir. Yes, man, sir. man. So as we get to the end, man, what we do here on the Black and Gold Hour mm -hmm. outside of football mm -hmm. is we kind of talk about encouragement and life. And mm -hmm. I want to include you in my last question. Uh -huh. um, when I, you know, checked out your Twitter page, I saw Joshua 1-9. Yep. And um, I want to read that verse to everybody. And then I want you to tell the, um, the audience what that means to you. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to read it first. Yep. Joshua 1 9 says, Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, with ever so thou goest. So, yes, with whoever, yeah. God is going to be with you. Yes, These sir. comforting words can apply to all of us as we seek to live a good life and overcome our unique challenges. So, that's yeah. just some commentary along with Joshua 1 9. Yeah. But it talks a lot about being courageous and fighting the different challenges through life. So, mm -hmm. Nick, I want to ask you, what does that verse mean to Nick Stallworth? I mean, that means the world to me, because I mean, growing up in the church, I mean, growing up with my mother and father, always going to church, my grandmother too, always taking me to church. I feel like I was always in the Bible at a young age, and it hit a certain point in my life where I was, I was feeling low, I was especially like in the recruiting process, for especially because I was getting looked at by a lot of uh, Division One guys and they were telling me, oh, you're an inch too short, you're not this, you're not that, but oh, we would love to have you, we love this about you. And it was one of those things where I just turned to God and I was like, I got, like, what, what do I do? And that verse stumbled upon me one day and I was like, hey, <laughs> no matter what you're going through, hey, God's going to be with you no matter what. He's going to be with you by your side through the highs and through the lows. 
And that's the verse I always go to, no matter how I'm feeling, I always reread and I just, I'm just be like, thank, thank you God for even putting me in this situation. So that, that's what that verse means to me. And I feel like everybody on this earth has a purpose to, to serve God in whichever way that he wants to, because I mean, without God, none of us would be here. I mean, none of us, none of us at all. So I feel like my purpose here, I feel like God is just putting me in this position to play ball so I can ultimately inspire and encourage other people. I feel like that's truly how I feel because I mean, the obstacles that I've had to overcome, I feel like for a person that's younger than me and they see me like, hey, he was able to do this and he came out of this school and was overlooked his whole entire life. I feel like that's inspiration for somebody. I feel like that's ultimately why God put me on this earth was to inspire and to encourage. Exactly, man. And when I think about Joshua 1, 9, I want to add that it reminds me of a verse that my grandmother gave me a long uh-huh. time ago, man. And that's uh-huh. why I, I was like smiling when you was talking, because it like reminds me of the verse that she gave me. And I'll read it. And it's from Habakkuk 319. And it says, mm-hmm. the Lord God is my strength and he will make my feet like hinds feet and he mm-hmm. will make me to walk on to my high places. To mm-hmm. chief singer on my string instruments. So what that means is, despite the challenges, God won't give us anything that we can't handle. We're right. here for a reason. And the things that we're faced with, God knew that we could overcome it with his aid, man. Mm-hmm. And, you know, man, Nick, as you go through your journey, man, I wish you nothing but the best. I and I pray you. that you, you know, just keep God with you and keep God close, no matter what challenges come your way, man. And if you keep God close, man, you you not only will you get to the NFL, but you'll accomplish so much as a, as a child of God, man. And you'll impact the world and so many other people as well. Man. Well, I greatly appreciate that, man. I'm praying. I'm praying it all works out for the best. Man, and we're going to be praying for you, too, here at the Black and Gold Hour, man. But I really appreciate you, man, for coming on the show, man. And, um, you know, man, I'm, we're going to be following you, man. And we're going to be, you know, wishing for your success, man, as you get to the NFL and reach your dream of becoming a professional football player. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for having me on. I greatly appreciate it. No problem, man. You you giving insight, man. You giving us the encouragement segment of the week, man. I really appreciate you for coming on the show today, man. And um, man, let, let, like I said, nothing but the best for you. And, um, you know, I'm praying for blessings, man. But thank you for joining today's show, man. That's been a great episode of the Black and Gold Hour podcast. Remember to like, comment and share the page, man. We're trying to grow and build and talk football as well as talking life. But that's it for today's episode. Everyone be safe. Peace.